And welcome back. You're watching our special pre-election program on SABC2, coming live to you at home from our studios in Johannesburg. Now, we've reached the very popular segment on our program. This is where we take our cameras into the streets and we give the viewers the opportunity to have their say in 60 seconds. government <laughs> From the past experiences, it wasn't too good. You have to actually go an extra effort to get them to do stuff for you, to get them to get involved in stuff, you know. But in terms of youth here, one of the bazaar, the the now remember, you can also have your say at home. Please SMS us. The SMS line is open now as we speak. That number is double three. Two seven six double three two seven six. Uh, just begin your SMS with the word elect and then uh, your message. It will cost you one rand and fifty cents. Now the Western Cape is the only province which is not ruled by the ANC. The Democratic Alliance holds both the province and several key municipalities. Historically the Cape has been the ANC's Achilles heel and with the party seemingly unable to curb infighting among its ranks and to mount a meaningful opposition the DA is aiming for another five years at the helm. Lucanio Calata filed this report. Cape Town, the jewel in South Africa's crown. As the oldest city in South Africa, it is aptly nicknamed the Mother City. Cape Town is also the second largest city in the country and is the economic hub of the Western Cape. It's no wonder then that control of the province and its municipalities tops the list of many a political party. Well, the Western Cape is, um, is very uh, attractive and appealing to all parties, mainly because it's a competitive multi-party system. And the benefit of that, uh, regardless of whether you are the national ruling party or whether you are a small opposition party, is that whenever you have elections, uh, they can be local or they can be national or provincial elections, what that means is that the race is always open and that there are no guaranteed winners. The Western Cape has a population of nearly 5 million people with three predominant languages, Afrikaans, Xhosa and English. Despite hosting parliament and being the legislative capital of the country, politics in the Cape have historically been unstable. Since 1994, very few premiers or even mayors have served out their allotted five-year terms in office. But since winning the local government elections in 2006, the Democratic Alliance have sought to bring about some level of stability. Earlier this year, the DA won rave reviews from Auditor General Terence Nombembe for the manner in which it has governed both the province, the city and several municipalities. If we look at the way in which election um, campaigns over maybe the last 10 years or so um, have tended to manifest, um, is that they center a lot on um, laundry lists, what parties plan to do. I think that the advantages that the DA has at the moment is that they are able to fashion their, their election campaign in a way in which they can present to the ed electorate what they have done and what they have been given credit for. But it hasn't all been smooth sailing for the DA. The gap between rich and poor is growing ever wider and that poses a problem of a different kind. Several municipalities have been rocked by service delivery protests. In fact, there were over 40 protests in the last two years. These include the school's protest of 2009 when pupils in towns such as Malmesbury on the west coast burned down several classrooms in protests against the DA's slow progress in dealing with overcrowding at the schools. Last year, the Cape Town Metro was also rocked by one of its biggest challenges yet. Residents of the Makaza informal settlement and the ANC Youth League 
were up in arms after the metro had provided them with toilets without walls. Despite the service delivery protest, what the evidence on the ground tells us is that um, um, uh, an enormous amount of people are being mobilized uh, to go out and to vote for the DA. And I think that what's going to complement that uh, are two things. The first one is that the ANC is weak, which, which, which uh, um, means that the choices that middle-of-the-road supporters have are very limited. The ANC in the province has been bedeviled by infighting and it remains to be seen if the party will be able to retain or improve on the 16 municipalities it won in the elections in 2006. Lukanya Talata, SABC News, Cape Town. Mm, interesting indeed. Now the local election in the Western Cape will indeed be very interesting. We're now joined by University of Western Cape political scientist Dr. Cheryl Africa from our studios down in Cape Town. Dr. Africa, good evening and welcome to our program. Good evening, thank you. Now, ANC Deputy President Khalima Mutlante has conceded that Cape Town will be out of reach for the party in this election. Is Cape Town lost to the ANC totally or will the May 18 vote surprise, well, most people? Well, I think it's widely accepted that the DA is the front runner for the Cape Metro. Um, what probably remains to be seen is whether they would win by a majority or a plurality. Um, of course, the ANC would still fiercely contest for the Metro. As was mentioned in the previous insert, the Western Cape, and certainly the Metro, is seen as um, a significant prize for any political party. Now, the Western Cape has the most parties registered for, for next month's elections. Are we likely to see interesting coalition politics staying out of after this election? I think, you know, um, whether there is a coalition really depends on the outcome of the elections. So, we saw previously there was a necessity for coalitions. And um, it really depends if there's an outright win, for example, in the metro, if the, ma the DA manages to secure a majority, then there wouldn't be a need for a coalition. If they get a plurality, then it necessitates a need for a coalition with smaller parties. Now, the, the other confirmation, the confirmation rather of Tony Einrach as the ANC's mayoral candidate against Patricia Diddle has certainly livened up this contest. Is this how both parties hope to win the coloured vote, that very important coloured vote for that matter? Um, certainly the selection of Tani Ehrenreich as well as Patricia De Lille are very good strategic choices for the ANC and for the DA respectively. They're both very, very strong candidates. With regard to whether it would win the all-important coloured vote, I think really we need to move away from um, attaching importance to the coloured vote. And the reason for that is because it's analysed as such an important voting block, but I think there's so many misconceptions around the so-called coloured vote um, because parties often make very significant blunders and mistakes because they misinterpret what they think is going to appeal to the coloured voter. So I, th I really think that we need to look at a more sophisticated way of analysing what's in the, happening in the Western Cape. Uh, certainly at a descriptive level, it's probably correct to say, yes, it's the coloured vote that has swung um, in one way or another for a particular party, whether it be at provincial level. Um, I mean, I can talk about that, but I think we need to start to debunk the myths around the coloured vote. Now, finally, before we let you go, Dr. Africa, the DA says Cape Town is probably the best-run municipality, but the ANC says not beyond the N2. What are the views, or your views on this? Okay, I think that naturally in the election campaign, um, the party that is doing well, they are going to highlight the strengths of whatever they've achieved. Any other party contesting is going to highlight the weaknesses. So that's a natural occurrence. Um, I think, though, that parties need to move away from um, highlighting the shortcomings of what the other one is doing because voters, they know what is being done wrong. And um, given that there's such complex issues in the Western Cape as in the rest of South Africa, which needs to be dealt with, parties need to move away from saying 
um, this other party is doing X, yeah. Y, and Z wrong, yeah. and rather move towards tackling the difficult socio-economic challenges facing the region. Dr. Africa, thank you very much for your participation in the special program, election program, and your views as well. Thank you very much. That was Dr. Cheryl Africa coming to us on our show. Now, political, in fact, now let's move on. I think we're going to go for a quick break. After the break, one of the smaller parties contesting next month's elections, the United Independent Front, states its case. Stay tuned. Don't go away. is on. South Africa's toughest film edition is back. This year, it's double the drama and twice the thrills. But we're looking for one man and one woman. You decide who's got what it takes. Begins 23 April, Saturdays at 6.30 p.m. Tonight on Seven Sorry, so competition night. Make sure you don't miss it every Sunday at 7. Welcome back. If you've just tuned in, you're watching a special pre-election show on SABC2. In every episode, we're giving one of the smaller parties contesting the local government elections a brief opportunity to state his or her party's case. Now, here's the United Independent Front's Mzwandile Mazia. United Independent Front want to fight corruption, nepotism and cronyism by ensuring that monitoring and evaluation guidelines are implemented in all municipalities. We want to bring back moral values by supporting faith-based organizations and bring strict rules to people selling liquor, reduce noise levels in our locations. We want to ensure that Christian values are promoted to change this culture of drug dependent among our youth. We will continue to fight for decent jobs and make sure that the middle class is not recycled back to poverty by ensuring that gap housing is implemented throughout the country. Right, so that's the independent or the united independent front giving us their view as to why you should vote for them. But it's not only the Western Cape where fireworks are expected in next month's elections. Analysts believe the race for seats in the Namakwa District Municipality at Springbok in the Northern Cape will be a close contest. But Richard DeLille's Independent Democratic Party has experienced steady growth in the area, holding the title as official opposition. But the wedding between the ID and the DA might just see a decline in support. Ulrich Henriks reports that the newcomer to the area, the Congress of the People, or COPE, is also waiting in the wings. There was since 2009 22 different verkiezings in the Namakwa District Municipality and the Nabijgeleerigtersveld. The ANC had an almost feitelijk schoonskip gemaakt, behalve the two that the OD and the enkele different verkiezings that the DA could win. But since then has the political landscape changed. Dit sluit in die samensmelting van die DA en die OD en koop sy leierskaps toos. Kiesers sê echter hulle sal vir kandidaten stem wat hulle gloe goeie dienste sal lever en partijprobleme sal nie noodwendig hulle besluit beinvloed nie. Nee, ek geloof nie, het maar in die enige verskil in my nie, want ek weet behandel ook op pad is en vir wie ek moet stem en so ek geloof nie, die ander mense maak my ooit die mekaar. Waar is die Joosje gestemd van enige, enige ander partij? Het zal me nog nooit deel. Maar uh, je hebt uh, straat al die voordeel van die mensen men wat boos zijn. Politieke partijen zijn alleen het hele wijswerk gedoen en verwacht vier werken. Op jullie stadium um, is die Kamisberg municipaliteit uh, 75-80% zekerheid dat die DA dit gaan oornemen. Uh, na Mokoi municipaliteit is ons bij 60% zeker dat ons 5 van die 9 wijken gaan oornemen. 
uh, ons is van voornemens dat ons elf uh, raadslieden op Namakooi gaan inkry. Die Richtersveld municipaliteit is ons uh, uh, 85% zeker en die Kaima municipaliteit is ons 50-50. Ons mensen soek een uh, uh, alternatief om die issue van, van armoede en week service delivery te adres. Ons is currently uh, met die campaign bezig van, in termen van die elections 2011 en die mensen uh, 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 met, met ons deur tot deur actie zeggen dat hulle is nog moog voor die uh, ANC en hulle voel dat hulle steeds verkoop. Die ANC sê hulle word glad nie bedreigd door oppositiepartijen nie en die uitsla sal in hulle gins wees. Ulrich Hendricks, SAIK Nies, Springbok. Hmm. Interesting. That's basically what we've got uh, time yeah. for this evening. But uh, join us again tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock here on SABC2 for much more election news. We're going to be focusing in on all issues that affect these local government elections. And we keep urging you on the show, and, and, and I'm sure to be so agreeing with me, yeah. that these are possibly the most important elections. I mean, this is what determines and the service you get. So instead of complaining, as people do sometimes, yeah. I'm not going to vote, I'm not going to vote, register, vote is too late to register, but do go out there, vote, it's your vote vote that counts so that you don't have to complain. Absolutely. We've joked about it before, we've said that uh, your vote gives you the right to complain. So yeah. go out there, vote so that you can complain freely. Have a fantastic evening everybody and uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. Same place, same time. Cheers. Good night.